Good morning and welcome to February. Yes, it's February 1st, 2024, 8.15 a.m. Central Time. It's your morning flash update. You know, I'm not in agreement with what I'm reading from people overnight. Uh, a lot of people, oh, the New York Community Bank, uh, the one that fell 46% in value yesterday, it's an outlier. I don't think so. It was just a question of when we would start seeing the very first problems in the commercial real estate start showing up. So just like water, you know, comes in, you get the tide and you get your little bit, eventually waves start coming in after that. Well, this is what I think it is. It's, it's, it's not gonna happen overnight, but it's the first. And I think there's many more to come. We kept reading that during the year as we get into it, a lot of the loans are gonna come up. And what are those buildings that are sitting around the major cities and a lot of the malls that aren't full? What, what are they worth? And what's the loan on it? What's the new interest rate gonna be? Uh, what do you have to pay? Uh, when you put up the value against that, how much is that down in value? Is it down a half? You got a building that's half occupied three years into the COVID that's over and it's still running 50% or so occupancy. And you wanna tell me that that's gonna hold its value? I got my doubts, what's gonna be repurposing? So that's one thing. Yesterday was also the first time that we got a chance to see how the market would play out. And maybe over the past 72 hours, the real word is, yes, AI is phenomenal. Yes, tech companies have done great. But if they don't exactly hit their numbers, the market is punishing. And going up between, think about this, from October 27th right through January, at what point does the market say, I'm overdone a bit, I need to consolidate this? You gotta think that through. I think you're at that point. The dollar getting a bid today at the expense of a number of currencies. What I didn't understand was all the strength in the yen yesterday at first. Then it came to me, gee, we're getting bond buying, we're getting yen buying. What is the market doing up with the gold? Why did it rally as much as it did? And all of a sudden, it was in front of us. It wasn't the Fed meeting. It was this fear about what's going on right now in the world. Commercial real estate certainly set that off. That was your trigger. Okay, for the Fed, what did they do yesterday in looking back at it? Just what's expected. The March rate cut is off the table. You may want to think it's still there. And certainly, if tomorrow morning, you get a crash in the jobless uh, report, it'll come back. Traders will say, no, it is back in play. But a strong jobless report all but puts the nail on the coffin that no, that is gone. It'll be after that. The Fed is already discussing the balance sheet runoff. They said as much. They said it in plain English. They don't think the next move is an interest rate hike. They said that. They don't think the risk are to the upside unless something strange happens. So we're getting what we want. Now you got to be patient. If you look at the energy markets today, sort of a neutral right here. I understand that one of the groups, one of the militant groups, that uh, Iran does back has said that they are through attacking the United States. Well, I don't blame them. Uh, right now, the U.S. is preparing who they're going to attack outside of Iran, how long. They're making it clear it's not a one-day event. It's going to go on for a while. So if I'm one of those groups, okay, we're through. We're through. You don't have to come here with your missiles and bomb the heck out of us. We're through. Okay. Your bonds and notes getting a bid. Grains continue to sink. There's nothing positive going on there. And before I get too far, I want to remind everybody. I know you watch me in the afternoons and you use your charts. Well, if you use TradingView, we have a suite of indicators. There's a lot of people that use that. We think our, our, our charting software blows this away. But for those of you that use it, we put everything together, Bollinger Bands, the swing lines, outside days, window envelopes, my version of slow stochastics with all of it. All you need to do to turn it on for yourself is go to our website, irapstein.com, go to the top right, client resources, go in there, do it. During the day, you'll get an email from us, we'll turn it on when you log out and back in, your suite will be right there for you. Pretty simple, irapstein.com, client resources at the very top. Okay, 
So let's talk a little bit about the news that we now have. And it's a day full of news. First of all, the Challenger Gray, you can see there's more job cuts that are being planned at this point. So we're up to 80,000. The Bank of England, no surprise, they held interest rates steady. The talk is they're looking for ways that they can cut it, but they need data to show it. Every bank is saying the same. Jobless claims in the U.S., nah, this isn't a big jump. You're up 9,000 to 224, uh, so that's 10,000 more than the last report. Where we did get a big jump is the continuing claims. 70,000 in one week is a lot. Last week's claims were sitting here at a 1833, now they've jumped. So those are people that aren't immediately finding a job. Is that the weakness showing up? There's less jobs being offered, and I just saw the report in January, than there have in recent years. So you are seeing the labor market pull back. If you're noticing company upon company in the S&P 500 that's been reporting, many of them are cutting their jobs. This is how they'll get to their bottom line. They'll get more productivity out. And speaking of productivity, the fourth quarter productivity up 3.2%. They expected it up 2.5. The third quarter preliminary, the third quarter preliminary was a 4.7. So we're not where we were then, but we beat the estimate. Preliminary non-farm labor costs up a half a percent. They expected it up 1.1. That's not the labor inflation that's there. That's good. The ISM will release their January manufacturing service sector numbers this morning. They're going to come out uh, about 9 o'clock or so, I think. Is that? Yeah, 9 o'clock. And they're looking for 47.2 compared to 47.4. We get construction spending. That comes out at 9. We get the natural gas drawdowns. So that's coming out. China today announced uh, that they are putting in, uh, I think, $21 billion into real estate. So they're coming more and more to the table. This will be for state owned properties and they are trying to come up with that. Copper did not get a bid off of that, which was, I thought, fairly fascinating. Uh, there's a lot of data. I, I was up this morning, as I usually am, 334, writing. I've already got two pages written. So there's just a lot of economic data that is coming out for everybody, and these are the things you have to pay attention to. In the gold market, you're not getting follow through from yesterday in terms of the market got nervous with uh, the New York Community Bank. Um, Bitcoin, sitting here at 42.7, but I, as I told you, I think the break ran its course. Uh, I know that certain analysts on TV were saying, oh no, we're going into the low 30s. I think you ran your break. I think that at this point, a good shot that that's over. You also ran your rallies up and maybe got overdone in platinum and in the copper. Copper, as I just said, not rallying on Chinese news that they're putting money in. I always pay attention. When you get bull news and the market doesn't pay attention to it, you want to run for the hill. So in a nutshell, Yesterday was a day where for the first time, I think, you put a chink in the armor of the bullishness in the stock market. You scared the heck out of the market in the end that it rallied sharply if traders weren't certain. But I'm also saying that the unions in Japan are now coming forward and they're telling you what they want. Now there's more and more talk of 6 and 7% hikes that they want. They seem to get all their negotiating done at one time in Japan. And at first it was 3.85%. Now it's up to 6 and 7. 6 and 7 is what Governor Ueda wants to see. And if he can see that wage inflation is grabbing hold, you could be at the end where he starts easing away from the negative interest rate policy in Japan. And that will change the carry trade in a lot of currencies. So you have to be aware of that. Again, I will catch all of you at the end of the day with our market wrap-ups. As I said, a lot of information today, a lot of digesting all that has gone on. And of course, a lot of us thinking about, gee, this is where most central banks are now getting ready for the cutting process. I'm Ira. You have a great trading day. See you this afternoon.